Do you want to become a professional Magento 2 developer, pass certification Magento 2 professional certification exam and write better Magento 2 code? In this video, I prepared five key principles which I would like to share with you for you to become a successful Magento 2 developer. Let's roll the intro. Today it's very important to understand principles and approaches and architectural decisions made in order to make uh, Magento 2 platform successful and flexible enough for us, Magento 2 developers or PHP developers, uh, to build customizations on top of Magento 2 platform and deliver best-in-class e-commerce uh, websites. For instance, if you would compare Magento 1 and Magento 2 platforms, in Magento 1 it's way simpler to understand even though it's complex platform but it's way simpler to understand compared to magenta 2 platform and for example if you would like to follow magenta 2 best practices you have to understand more you have to know what tool what uh, capability can be used for magenta 2 in order to write your own extension. So number one concept which is used in Magento 2 platform, this is a dependency injection. Dependency injection is used for, I would say, 99.9% .9 of cases when you would like to write your business logic in an extension. And this dependency injection allows you to add or simplify your business logic and distribute across multiple PHP classes and provide a small units or small service classes which are responsible for single operation and this service class can be injected via construct method into another class in order to build uh, a unit of code which you can say that this is a, an extension or an algorithm which can be performed for your needs or for business requ business requirements so First of all is to understand what is dependency injection because without it I would say that you would come back into Magento 1 era or you would uh, start using uh, some kind of static calls or static methods in order to use some other uh, third party class or even Magento framework class and it wouldn't be as flexible as testable as you would achieve with dependency injection concept. So this is a number one thing you have to learn. The second thing that Magento 2 is is using a layout system. Layout system, if you would compare any other platform, any other capabilities, let's say you 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 are coming from Symphony World or from Zen Framework or I don't know like Laravel or any other world you have experience working and building mvc based uh, applications you would find out that in action controllers of any other framework you will see that layout system is tightly coupled with action controllers in magento there is a thing called layout and layout allows to to have a split between action controllers and uh, rendering logic so you can put all your uh, templates, all your views into layouts. And this layout will be used in order to load and prepare all view logic based on a action controller you are going to use and render some logic. So this is a one thing. And another thing, Magento 2 also uses UI components and UI components it's additional add-on on top of a layout mechanism, which allows to let's say simply configure uh, like grids or listings or forms or some elements and with the help of xml declaration you can build flexible ui elements but the thing is with magenta 2 ui components are built in a way that it's super complex and super hard to understand and if you would by any chance understand whole logic how it works how ui components uh, work and you can use this UI components you will be in a better position 
then just uh, with a simple understanding what is layout and how to use layout uh, with your extensions. You may also check uh, the official documentation or examples or on, on my channel you might find uh, different uh, tutorials related to rendering mechanism. But uh, I would also advise you to check uh, Magento 4 code extensions which come together with Magento to open source out of box extensions which uh, some of the extensions uh, are using UI uh, components like listings and uh, forms in order to render some elements or some components on a page whether it's admin panel or front-end panel once you will understand layout and UI components and you will be familiar with uh, with this uh, approach you will find out that it's super flexible and it's super easy to configure even though you have a one extension and a second extension can also inject some bits and pieces or some uh, rendering logic or or data into your uh, layouts or into your UI components. So, so with the XML declaration, it's super simple to do this. Number three. Number three in Magento 2 is uh, view models. The fact that view models exist and uh, as you aren't maybe familiar uh, with view models, view model is a simple class which provides data from a backend to a front to a front end or to your rendering logic. By rendering logic, I mean uh, PHTML templates which are widely used in Magento 2. So view models are used in Magento 2, and this uh, technique or concept replaces or view model replaces uh, blocks. Starting from Magento 1, uh, there was a block classes introduced in order to prepare all business logic, all data and pass this information into PHTML files and with Magento 2 view models allow to simplify your uh, dependencies, simplify the way how you retrieve data and pre-populate it in view model for your PHTML files. So once you will get familiar with this view model approach and you will get rid of all your blocks which you probably have or if you start working with Magento 2 I would not recommend you to write blocks unless you're writing some admin uh, experience but uh, or extending uh, configuration of admin experience because there are still some parts of Magento 2 which are, uh, use and provide blocks as a way of extending existing logic. So whenever possible, try to avoid using blocks and prefer using view models. Number four, single responsibility principle. This principle is used, I would say, in almost all uh, areas of uh, Magento 2 extension, because if you will open Action Controller, if you will compare Action Controller with Symfony uh, framework, with Zend framework and with uh, Action Controller in Magento 2, you will find out that uh, Magento 2 uses a single responsibility approach, meaning that Action Controller has only one method called execute, and this execute is responsible for the logic you will put into this method, compared to, let's say, Symfony, where you have a, an Action Controller and different public methods which are responsible for different actions. So instead of method-based actions, Magento 2 uh, decided to go with uh, controller based actions so this is a one example of single responsibility another example is that for example if you would like to build class which is responsible for retrieving an object or an instance or a data record for, from a database let's say it's this class is called repository this is what repository should follow a single responsibility meaning that it will have uh, only methods which are applicable for uh, retrieval operation and this all dependencies which which have to be injected into repository in order to achieve a desired result or in order to retrieve data which you would like to get from a storage you would have only methods which are focused on uh, providing these operations like get operations or if you would like to provide uh, set operations for storing objects you would likely to to create a separate class and in this way you will have a sm smaller classes and smaller classes with 
with uh, tiny methods will allow you to test your code, to extend your code, to improve your code, or to fix your code without additional effort where you would spend uh, half of a day trying to figure out what this 200 lines of code method uh, performs and how to fix it. So single responsibility principle is followed in Magento 2. There are some areas which can be improved. However, if you would follow single responsibility principle in your extensions, you would be in a better position with, uh, with the quality of your code. Number five, that Magento 2 is using is widely using XML-based configuration, meaning that it's probably Magento 2 is probably number one platform and framework. Uh, which uses, which heavily uses XML, meaning that once you have uh, XML or once you have a de declarative approach of providing some data or some dependencies or uh, configuration or whatever, you can have, uh, you can follow a declarative based approach and this approach allows you to be more flexible as a platform or more flexible as an extension because for instance, Magento 2 also uh, supports declarative schema ap approach, meaning that you can declare your database table in a XML file. And this XML file, once uh, an extension, a third party extension would like to customize, it can simply write another piece of XML without copy paste or duplicate of code. And this XML will introduce another column which can be added into existing table. So, XML is widely used, it's overused, I would say, in Magento 2. However, uh, this is a very flexible and developer-friendly approach because with XML you can have XSD validation. So once you will configure this uh, validation, XSD validation, you can have all this highlighting and validation capability for XML files and you can write these XML files faster. And also XML files allow you to modify your PHP code less frequently, which is also a benefit for a stable API-based uh, extensions. And bonus uh, concept which I would like to share with you is that Magento 2 uses compilation, meaning that, that once you will run your Magento 2 application, it will perform some uh, compilation activities or uh, runs a compilation and regenerate PHP code and PHP classes, interfaces and other like static assets, but uh, it's not about static like JavaScript, CSS and HTML files. It's about compilation of PHP code. So Magento 2 allows you to avoid writing boilerplate uh, PHP classes like factories, like proxies, uh, like extension attributes uh, classes. Instead of you writing over and over ag again uh, different classes and in the same way it's similar classes, Magento 2 will uh, generate classes for you and you can use them in your custom Magento 2 extension. So this is a very flexible uh, approach and it streamlines the developer experience without extra effort i would say in a, in a way where you would avoid writing this uh, boilerplate code and you would focus primarily on business logic so this is uh, six concepts i i wanted to share with you and once you will learn these six concepts obviously there are way more tools and concepts you have to learn in order to become a professional Magento 2 developer. However, if you will start with this understanding of what's going on, like what is layout, UI component, single responsibility, dependency injection, and so on, you will be, it would be a good start for you as a developer if you would like to join Magento 2 platform. And I'm, I guarantee you that you will learn new things every single day when you touch Magento 2, when you build uh, extensions, when you customize code, when you fix bugs and so on. I hope you like this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit this bell icon. Uh, leave the comments below this video with the questions if you would like to hear more about uh, Magento 2 and maybe some uh, something it's, isn't very clear or you aren't sure where to start, I would be more than happy to help you and never stop learning uh, new 
technologies, new platforms, and I will see you. I will see you in the next tutorial.